In the year 1970, a new television show appeared on our screens. And that's what this new series, Time Slip, is all about. Children projecting themselves forwards and backwards in time. <laughs> Slip came about was because ATV, which was one of the major, one of the seven major ITV companies, uh, had an obligation under the uh, ITC contract to produce children's programmes. The network wanted a children's series. Uh, Bill Ward, our programme controller at that time, thought we could make it for them. Go away and think of something, find a writer, whatever. Science fiction was all a go around about the late 60s, and uh, I was approached by Rennie Goddard at ATV to think about an idea. I thought about it, but it wasn't the right idea. We can't do your series, but I've got this. Do you want to write the scripts? You see, the, the great thing at the time was um, Doctor Who, with extraordinary effects and extraordinary ideas and all the rest of it. Ruth wanted something sort of down to earth about ordinary children who had some sort of a way into science. Um, I was doing a workshop, a drama workshop, with uh, a group um, once a week. And my teacher, um, who was an actor himself, one of his uh, ex-pupils was working at an agency, a theatre agency. And it just so happened that he'd heard about um, the interview, uh, the auditions for Time Slip. Sitting at home feeling sorry for myself, re recovering from flu, being home from school, and the phone ringing, and it being Martin Lysmore, an associate producer at the BBC, who had worked on my first job. And I thought they were perfect for the parts that had been written. Well, once I'd come down off cloud nine, <laughs> um, the first thing for me was to, to receive the first couple of scripts, um, and then have a date set for the first read-through. And the floor manager actually introduced us. And I think the first thing I said to him was, my God, I'm going to look like a, what was it, dragon or something up against him. She thought, my God, I'm going to look matronly at the side of him. Because I was actually taller than him when we first started the series. He was there with his, uh, his, his jacket and his briefcase under his arm, looking very, very official and uh, ready to go. She looked... Um, a sophisticated young lady, whereas there was something of a schoolboy about uh, about me. Now then, I've had just about enough of you village children and your games. Last week there was some little twerp tried to smoke us out with stink bombs, but this Mr. is Trainer. absolutely... Mr. What? You're Mr. Trainer from the hotel. Casting Dennis Quilly was a stroke of genius on John's part. I think it was the casting director who cast me. My husband's putting the caravan in order this afternoon. I thought of this story about the wrong end of time simply because my greengrocer had said to me one Saturday morning, you know, my cousin, my cousin was on duty down on the south coast when the Germans arrived. You had um, camera rehearsals and you had rehearsals in the studio and you had costume rehearsals and you jolly well have to get on with it. Well, they were wax bottles, and in the, the heat of the studio lighting, uh, come the actual take, the first bottle I picked up actually broke at the neck. We weren't blessed with the best designers in ATV. The second time, it just sagged. So he ordered a nice big piece of granite or something. It was quite expensive for her to work on so that he could take it over and use it himself because it's an expensive material. You're on his side. You think he's marvellous, don't you? Yes, I do. She was a brilliant girl, and I was very, very proud. And, of course, John Baden going mad, <laughs> more or less. We were fed the, the, the story that, that John didn't suffer fools gladly. I'll hear no more. Not a word. I, I wasn't too keen on my outfits. Um, so when I was put into trousers and this shirt, it was my idea to tie it up. Lots and lots of issues that have become everyday currency now. The computer prints off copies of the world's newspapers as soon as the papers reach the streets. The great dilemma for the world is global warming. It's a shame about what happened in Liverpool, I suppose. 
But on the other hand, with a majority of exports cope with by air freight, who needs a place like that above water anyway? But I always thought Devereux was the first clone, the only clone. Well, it was a good story. And they're beginning to ask one or two awkward questions. I mean, there was I playing a clone in 1970. Nobody knew what a clone was. There was talk of running a, a comic strip in Look In magazine. Artist Mike Noble would visit the rehearsal studio to help bring the characters to life. It was one of the best times of my life. It was one of the best experiences. Without a doubt, it, 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 it probably holds the, 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 the greatest place in my heart of all, all the work I did sub subsequently to Time Slip. I think I can honestly say, looking back on it, that it was the best team I've ever worked with. If it had an effect on one person, it was worth doing. Today's science fiction so often becomes tomorrow's science fact.